with the drop of blood pressure that gives reflex uh, tachycardia, which is again not good for the fetus. In that case, IV, the first choice is IV labitalol. Right? Uh, if you don't have labitalol, we can try with the oral nephilipine. If that fails, or if we don't have any other choice, then we can go with IV hydrolysis. Okay, so that is control of blood pressure. Then prevention of eclampsia, what we have to do is, uh, we have... Uh, ...sulfate 4 gram uh, bolus, IV bolus, 1 gram per hour IV... Right? Then we have to plan delivery. To plan delivery, 33 weeks at uh, 33 weeks of prime gravida. So we will have to go for cesarean section. For the cesarean section, now it is preterm. Preterm patient with preeclampsia. So we have to give dexamethasone. Completion of dexamethasone means now uh, if patient comes with uh, this history at 33 weeks. So what we will do is we can we will control blood pressure and we will start on magnesium sulfate. So we may delay the delivery for about 48 hours or 24 hours until we complete the dexamethasone because for the fetal maturity, lung maturity, we give dexamethasone. So we consider completion of what is the time of completion of dexamethasone. If we get a patient from somewhere else, what we do is we put her to the ICU. And then we do mag start on magnesium sulfate, we monitor the patient. Meanwhile, we give dexamethasone. Uh, it may be 12 mg 12 hourly 2 doses, so 8 mg uh, 12 hourly 3 doses. Until that, we will, uh, we will, uh, we won't deliver. So we will wait if all the other investigations are normal. If patient is in health, or DIC, so we may deliver without waiting for dexamethasone. But if patient is the last, last response is something like a artery doctor shows that the absent endosteric flow. So absent endosteric flow means that now the uh, fetus is affected. Now the placental perfusion is not good. So next time that may reverse, the, the interstellar blood flow may reverse, so which can lead to death in utero. So we have to consider that also. But the amniotic fluid index of 4, it doesn't mean nothing now, but it's, it's a sign of fetal growth restriction. The growth velocity and the amniotic fluid index and Doppler studies. But even if the amniotic fluid index is less than 5, we may not deliver. If the Dopplers are normal, if the CTG is normal, Doppler flow, if Doppler flow is normal, if CTG is normal, we can drag on even though light volume is low. So in, out of all this, uh, the least important thing is the A5. Urine protein 3 plus means she is having significant proteinuria. So she is with severe pre preeclampsia. And 110 with 3 plus of protein is severe preeclampsia. So it's very, very important fact. We can't just ignore it. 1 plus so trace of urine protein, yes, we can drag on. But 3 plus of proteinuria and high blood pressure, so she, the high risk of getting complications like eclampsia, DIC, health. So all the other factors are important, but least important thing is the four quadrant A5 of five centimeters. Okay. Any questions? If somebody in the clinicals also, if somebody asks, you get the patient with preeclampsia. So the what is the management? So management, as I mentioned, control of blood pressure, prevent eclampsia, and plan delivery. The final treatment is delivery. Right? So to plan delivery, if it is preterm, we have to give dexamethasone and then decide on mode, mode of delivery. Always, if it's not cesarean section, suppose patient is in labor, and if, it is, if the cervix is favorable, we can go for even vaginal delivery. 
but for 33 week prime gravida so it's unlikely that she go into labor very soon so we may have we will have to go for a cesarean section after uh, stabilizing the patient so stabilizing is again another thing so dexamethasone we complete dexamethasone if the investigations are normal then we go for delivery but when we do the investigation if shows some DIC or health, so we may not wait, so we may give uh, one dose of dexamethasone and we may deliver. But if the patient is otherwise stable, we can wait 24 to 48 hours after completion of dexamethasone. Okay? Can you repeat the dexamethasone uh, doses again? Okay. Doses, the recommended dose is 8 mg, 12 hourly, 3 doses, right? Normally, for any, if, we, uh, if we suspect any preterm delivery, so we give dexamethasone 8 mg, 3 doses, 12 hours apart. But in a patient like this, so if we think that we can't wait now 12 hours 12 hourly three doses mean it's more than 24 hours now if we give one in the morning then one in the night the next one next day morning so it uh, it says at least uh, the if we wait 24 hours after completion of the dexamethasone or better if we can wait 48 hours after com completion of uh, dexamethasone so then it will be two to three days, right? In that case, if it is a real emergency, if patient is in a, uh, in a, a situation like this, we may go for 12 milligram, 12 hourly, two doses. So if we give one in the morning, one in the night, so we can deliver the, uh, we can plan the delivery tomorrow or day after. So if it is a real emergency, uh, Critical condition, so we give 12 milligram 12 hourly two doses. Or oh, otherwise, suppose now her blood pressure is very high, but protein is one plus or trace. So we don't have to deliver her very quickly, we can wait a little bit more. If Doppler is normal, if blood pressure is high, but there is no significant proteinuria, then we may give 8 milligram 12 hourly three doses and we can wait. Okay. Okay, madam. Right. So we will go for the next one. So answer is four quadrant amniotic fluid index of five. Uh, a woman delivered the first of twin weighing, that means it's a twin pregnancy, delivered the first of twin weighing 2.6 kilograms. The second twin is in breech presentation. On vaginal examination, the membranes are absent and the cord is felt in the vagina, right? So that is cord collapse. So after delivery of the first pin, there is cord prolapse of the, prolapse of the second pin. Cord pulsations are absent. You don't feel the cord, cord pulsation. The breach is felt 2 centimeters above the sphere spine. The most appropriate next step of her management is now first twin delivered, second twin is in breach with cord prolapse, you don't feel the cord pulsation. So what is the most appropriate next step of her management? So arrange an urgent cesarean section and deliver the baby. Explain the condition to the mother. <coughs> perform an urgent bedside ultrasound examination to confirm the viability of the fetus, perform the breech extraction and replace the cord into the vagina. So, what do you think? Replace the cord into the uterus, so that, not vagina, into the uterus. What do you think? First twin delivered, second twin in breech with cord um, prolapse and absent cord pulsation. What should you do? Any answer? 
Perform range extraction. Perform range extraction. Okay, any other answer? Answer three. Answer three. Okay, any other answer? Answer one. Okay. <laughs> There's two more. <laughs> any more answer? Answer one. Answer one. Okay. Right. So I will explain. Now this patient. So again. Pill pregnancy, first one delivered, second one in breach, and cord prolapse, but cold, cord pulsations are absent. The first thing we want to know is now cord pulsation absent means we want to know whether this fetus is dead or not. Right? So, the first thing is we have to arrange a um, uh, bedside ultrasound scan to confirm the viability. Now, if the fetus is not viable, what is the point of delivering? What is the point of going for cesarean section? Or what is the point of go going for breach extraction? If fetus is not alive, no point in going for urgent cesarean section or perform breach extraction. So first, even though cord pulsation, even though we don't feel the cord pulse in the vagina, so there may be heartbeat. So we have to confirm by confirm the viability of the fetus by doing an ultrasound scan. If the fetus is viable, yes, then we can go for. We have to deliver the fetus early as possible, right? Then breach extraction. So management of breach is. So either uh, ECV, cesarean section, assisted breach. Breach extraction means we don't wait until we descend. So we extract the, we pull the legs and then we deliver, forcefully deliver, breach extraction. So this is the only indication for breach extraction if when, they are, when the fetus is in breach. The only indication for breach extraction is Cord collapse of the second twin, right? But the fetus should be alive, right? Then, cord perhaps a cavity and second twin, if the fetus is alive, so we have to extract the breach and deliver as soon as possible. Now, in this patient, if the breach is still two centimeters above the scale spine, so we may not be able to go for breach extraction. So, in that case, we may have to go for urgent cesarean section if the fetus is alive. Okay. First thing we have to confirm the viability of the fetus. Then we may have to go for urgent cesarean section to deliver the baby under general anesthesia. Right. Uh, if the fetus is alive. But suppose if the breach is below uh, 2 centimeters above the scale spine, scale spine is uh, very high. Right. We may not be able to go for breach extraction there. So in that case, so we may have to go for urgent cesarean section, but before that, we have to confirm the viability, at least bradycard. So if we, even with bradycardia, if we deliver the fetus as soon as possible under general anesthesia, so pediatric team will be able to resuscitate the fetus. Right? So the Answer is perform urgent bedside ultrasound scan examination to confirm the viability of the fetus. If the fetus is viable, then we may have to go for urgent cesarean section and deliver the baby. Yes. Why not? Answer E. Fourth. Why not answer E is replace the cord into the uterus so that is that is something that we should not so once the cord is out you will not be able to put it into the uterus right uh, the other thing is when even when you feel the cord pulsation what you should not do is to touch the cord when you touch the cord uh, that vessel will go into spasm and that can cut off the uh, blood supply to the fetus. So when you are managing cord prolapse, it says that you should not touch the cord. But the management of course, we we forget about this uh, this uh, breach and the twin. 
So management of code prolapse. Yes. Is it only applicable in twin? Answer four. Not twin, any breeds, right? So you are asking uh, the twin breed, it's only applicable for breed. Perform breed extraction, sorry, if I said the twin, no. The breed extraction only applicable when there is code prolapse, right? So maybe after, maybe after a twin or, uh, sorry, maybe after a twin or maybe a singleton pregnancy. So are we putting the cord into the vagina and fill the bladder with saline? Madam, can you repeat the indication of breach extraction and cesarean section? Okay. Now, breach extraction, I said, so the, in a normal breach delivery, what we do is assisted breach delivery. Assisted breach delivery means we wait until you see the um, uh, buttocks. So we let it descend. So when it is descending, we deliver the legs. So we wait until it descend until we see the uh, inferior margin of the scapula and then we deliver the head. So then we wait until it descends until you see the neutral pole. Then we deliver the fetal head. Right? Okay. But the first step in management of prolapse is replacement of cord into the uterus with warm saline soap. Yes, I am coming there. Right? Then, <coughs> right? Okay. Then, uh, so that is breach delivery. So, breach extraction is done when there is cord prolapse. Cord prolapse and breach, then we go for breach extraction. So, forget about breach, any cord prolapse. Any cord prolapse management, what is the management? So, what you should do is, we have to push the presenting part up. So, it says we should not touch the cord. Yes, you said warm saline pack. Yes, we, we insert a warm saline pack because to prevent spasm of the cord, right? Outside Tiyanavana, we can replace into the vagina. Don't think that you can replace it into the uterus. So, if the cord is outside vagina, so introitus sekinu teliena, you can insert a saline pack and replace it in the uh, vagina. You, don't, you won't be able to put it into the uterus. So, we should not touch the cord. It can go into the spasm and then it can cut off the blood supply. By hand, what we have to do is we have to push the presenting part up. So, you would have seen that we insert our hand into the vagina. That is not to push the cord up. We have to push the presenting part up to prevent the pressure on the cord. And cord the kind of one your cervix is in the with contraction, if the head of breach is pressing on the cord, that will cut out the blood supply to the cord. So, we, uh, we fill the bladder with normal saline. That is again to push the presenting part up to prevent the pressure on the umbilical cord. Bladder is filled with the presenting part. The presenting part again. Umbilical cord is the pressure to prevent them. So that will help to maintain the uh, umbilical uh, perfusion, right? Umbilical artery and vein perfusion. So you fill the bladder, we push the, by inserting two fingers into the vagina, we push the head to reach up, right? Not pushing the cord up. So we replace the cord into the vagina with warm saline that is again to prevent spasm if the cord is outside then with the temperature so it will uh, isn't filled bladder going to compress the cord. Yeah, bladder is filled with the cord is compressed. Bladder is filled with the presenting part is out of the way. A cord is the compression. The blood is the soft mass. It can help the carry breach. It can help the heart pressing on and the cord compression. Bladder field is the cord compression. Bladder field is the cord compression. It can prevent the cord compression by putting the by pushing the head up. Head to breach up. Right? 
So management of core prolapse is fill the bladder with warm saline. Then you replace the cord into the vagina with warm saline to prevent spasm. You should not touch the cord. We push the uh, presenting part up to prevent cord compression. On the other hand, we, we may put the patient into the left lateral or all four uh, position again that to prevent the cord compression. Then we put what we do is we put her in her knees and then oh, we turn her to the left lateral, we insert our fingers and then we feel that we catheterize and fill the bladder. Bladder to fill we put a clamp to prevent the, uh, the saline coming out. Then, then uh, we take the patient to the theater on the trolley in all four or on her knees or left lateral. Then we uh, take her to the theater, right? So then we do the uh, cesarean section under general anesthesia. So we have to remember to uh, release the uh, clamp over the catheter because otherwise uh, all four means we bring When all four position means that the patient moving at the danaga hagi, when the body head deka nanti in head deka isra hati, when the body compression ne kar doye na, right? If cord touching, don't touch. Mangkwe saline pack ke kaak kaar agi na saline pack ke kinta mein push kara. Saline bone, saline pack ke kin spasm me ka nawaata. If touching the cord going to make spasm, how to put cord into the vagina without touching. You should not touch with your hand. Ek ta mein kwe bone saline pack ke kaak kara. Pack ke kata mein push kara. What I can tell you, I can tell you that I can push the runner, when it is out, it is out. Right? If this cord, let me be a breach extraction, then not only for second pin, any breach, breach extraction, any breach with cord plus, we have to go for breach extraction. What if we? Just position was there as the answer. What are we going to choose? The viability of the viability or neatest position. Neatest position depend on whether fetus is viable or not. Fetus is viable, there is no hurry to deliver this patient. We deliver this fetus. So we will let it deliver. So we have to deliver. So first you have to confirm the viability. It was your yokum karna patient cesarean section. Nikhatiya. Ashna goda hai. Ni mat ko yada. So, madam, breech extraction only for second pin in breech with cord prolapse. So even sing, even for single can breech with cord prolapse, right? And uh, madam, when we push presenting part. When we push presenting part at that time also we touch the no, presenting part if you push can put we don't touch the cord. Presenting part can when you insert two fingers so you touch if it is head, you push the head up. If it is breath, you push the breach up. We are not in, we are not touching the cord. Angle taking head deck high then head deck you push the head up. If it is breach, you push the breach up. You are not touching the cord. Cord is not going in. Right? When it is out, it is out. What we have to do is prevent cord function and deliver as soon as possible. Uh, All four, four position means that the trolley is the same the patient. The cord presentation, sorry, cord uh, pressure on the cord is prevented, right? Cord compression is prevented. Mm -hmm.
Okay, other one is now you are asking about uh, this, um, this, why we are going for cesarean section. Two centimeters above scale spine is that it is very high. Notify seems position. Modify. There are a number of positions that you can put the patient in. So although then, then uh, there's another one that you keep a pillow under the buttocks and really wait. All the positions are to prevent cord compression. Right? Okay? Cord compression. So the, the all measures we take to prevent cord compression, even though the cord is out, now if the, uh, the if the blood uh, blood supply is not cut off to the feeder, so there is no problem. So there are a number of positions that we can put the patient in to prevent this cord compression. Right? Same position, the number of, so left lateral, you keep a pillow under the <coughs> buttocks and also, so depending on the condition, so we have to put her into a position that minimizes the cord compression. Right? Other thing is, so whatever the positions we say, sometimes it's very difficult. You see, in our trolleys, how can we take a patient in this position, that small trolley? How can you take this patient into the theater uh, in that trolley from the labor room? Right? Sometimes it's really difficult. But the most important things are, right? Uh, the fill the bladder. Prevent uh, cord uh, spasms by uh, inserting warm pack. The warm pack is in cord, the vagina is in the pool, and the pool is in the pool. In the pool, we have to cover the cord with the warm saline pack. Right? Then we insert the hand into the vagina and push it up. So then we have to take her to the theater as soon as possible. So one is asking, are we doing it under general anesthesia? Yeah, yes. So if you encounter with uh, any cord collapse, you must give a call to the theater. There is a cord collapse, so we are bringing the patient. So anesthetic should be ready to give general anesthesia while you are taking the patient to the theater. That is very important. Before taking her there, you have to give a call to the theater, inform theater staff there is a cord collapse. So they will be <coughs> ready for general anesthesia. So soon as they give general anesthesia, we have to release the cord, the clamp over the catheter, otherwise we may cut through the bladder because we have filled the bladder. So release the clamp over the catheter and uh, uh, then uh, drain the urine, then deliver the fetus as soon as possible. How to assess cord pulsation means when you, uh, when you insert your fingers, so first, how to diagnose cord prolapse? How do you diagnose cord collapse? So after ARM or something, so when you are monitoring fetal heart uh, sounds, so if, if it sudden, uh, if it drops suddenly after ARM or something, you have to suspect that there may be cord collapse. When we do the vaginal examination, Yes, we may feel the cord at the same time, so we may feel whether cord pulsation is there or not. Cord like a pulsate, when other than the other, cord like a feel when you put it there, you know. Right? So, as soon as if you feel cord, then you have to make the old, you have to take all the other measures to prevent the cord pulsation. Okay? Then, if you have a cord, you can try to 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 try uh, deliver her under general anesthesia. Breach extraction with cord prolapse. Yes, uh, if the breach is in the, at, at least at the scale spine or below that, yes, we can extract the breach. In this patient, you can see now it says breach is felt 2 centimeters above the scale spine. So it will be difficult to extract the breach. Can you go down to the TNA breach checker? So we won't be able to extract the breach. 
then showing that yes, we may have to go for near term cesarean section under general anesthesia. Any more questions? Now, question to you know the anything I miss here? Then other thing is, so you can see we have our protocols here. Uh, the department, okay, we have protocols. I think all of you are having photocopies of that. Uh, so once you diagnose port prolapse, everything depends on whether fetus is alive or not. Right? If the if fetus is dead, no point to do anything, no point in doing any of these measures, you let it deliver. Right? But if the fetus is live, so then we have to take all these measures, right? Port pulsation now, let them first we have to confirm whether it is alive or dead. If it is dead, then you draw no point in going for any of those things. So you let it deliver, whether it is weak or carefully, but it is let it deliver. But if it is alive, yes, we have to take all these measures and deliver it as soon as possible. Okay, flow chart for the management of cord prolapse, right? Then you just have a look. So if fetus is live, so if fetus is dead. If the cord was outside, what would be the uh, next step? There's no difference. Cord is a bit of transfer, right? Without doing any, without taking any of those measures, even if the cord is outside, still the same. It depends on whether fetus is alive or not. Madam, I have a question about preeclampsia. The choice of pressure control is taken as the first step at what blood pressure level are we taking that as answer? Is there any place to magnesium sulfate as first step? Uh, blood pressure, first you have to control the blood pressure. If patient is not having fits, right? First thing is you have to control blood pressure. Eclampsia is not the only complication of uh, high blood pressure. If there is very high blood pressure, patient can get intracranial hemorrhages, right? So then, so you have to control the blood pressure first. If patient is having eclampsia, yes, then you have to do both at the same time, right? But if patient is not having fits, uh, then it's not a problem. Uh, it's not a problem. The first choice is not magnesium sulfate. Then first you have to control the blood pressure. Eclampsia is not the only complication. First thing is to control blood pressure. <coughs> the choice of pressure control is taken and the first step at what blood pressure level are we taking that test answer? Is there any place for magnesium? One blood pressure is a key. Blood pressure we don't give antihypertensive unless blood pressure is more than 150 100. 150 100 you have to give antihypertensive. So whatever the blood pressure above 150 100, first step will be uh, antihypertensive. Right? Suppose there can be some patients with uh, normal blood pressure. Preeclampsia always blood pressure is not very high. So depending on the presentation of the patient, some patients they may come with blood pressure of 150 100. But with eclampsia, in that case, the magnesium sulfate is the first step. Madam, how much volume of warm saline we need to fill the bladder? Bladder eka fill karani warm saline wali me on the patala wali na. Warm saline needs to, you have to soak a towel, a ghost towel with warm saline and then cover the cord. Bladder eka fill karani na warm saline wali fill karani na. Blood is a normal saline in filter. So, it may be, it depends on it, maybe 300, 400, blood is a complete one that fill when I come, he can fill the blood. Right? Blood is a liter of one that is a liter of one. Usually, we fill it with 300 or 400 ml of uh, normal saline. Warm saline will fill it. 
metam mean preeclampsia with moderate blood pressure what is the first step ekrada ma answer ek dunna mona oka una blood pressure control is the first step but as i said if blood pressure is normal but even patient is having preeclampsia then first step will be magnesium salt what about management if says there are impending signs ek thama impending signs thiyena na blood pressure ek very high natta then magnesium salt some are patient like no initially their blood pressure may be normal but they may be having significant proteinuria with impending signs in those patients yes some i told you the antihypertensive we give if it if the blood pressure is over 150 100 suppose there is a patient coming with blood pressure of 150 over 100 but with impending signs and significant proteinuria in that patient we may not give any antihypertensive but we may start her on uh, magnesium salt so that that depends on the presentation of the patient if blood pressure is very high first step is in control of blood pressure anything else anything else you want to ask still we have discussed only three any other questions pre preeclampsia or breach or cord prolapse whatever anything else you want to ask or can we move on to the other question at least one more okay so the best thing is you go and see some structured this uh, question so we have given on cord prolapse preeclampsia preeclampsia nitharama dena wane questions so every year you get something on preeclampsia preeclampsia eclampsia so better go through those questions then you can get some idea because we give different scenarios different clinical presentation Madam, what's the cutoff period of gestation to give dexamethasone? And then also, come and learn now. Dexamethasone definite indication if we plan delivery if the gestation is less than 34 weeks. 34 week less than 34 weeks definitely we have to give dexamethasone. So the row now some uh, some says it's better to give or. you don't need in between 34 to 36 weeks so it depends on the clinical scenario depending on the clinician's decision to give dexamethasone in between 34 to 36 weeks but if it is beyond 36 weeks of period of gestation we don't give dexamethasone right below 34 weeks of gestation you must give dexamethasone pro area between 34 to 36 weeks Beyond thirty-six weeks, we don't give. Madam, is preeclampsia a risk factor for cord prolapse? No, preeclampsia is not a risk factor for cord prolapse. Why you are correlating these two? One is on preeclampsia, other one cord prolapse. How does it cause uh, cord prolapse? Why do you think so? it's not a risk factor any other questions yes so no madam shall we discuss few more questions please okay but not today no 155 yes so we will continue i don't have any more in lecture topics to be uh, do so i will continue doing more questions in uh, future so this time we can discuss questions on uh, sbs and mcq since these are straight forward i think the sb is more important because as you said we can uh, discuss more more details when we are discussing this uh, sbs right so in next uh, so i am doing every other tuesday i don't have much lecture topics i think the topics i had i have done Uh, so we can discuss questions uh, 
Arizona. Do we have time to discuss on home? Do you have a lecture at 2 o'clock? Yes or no? No, no. Okay, then we will discuss one more. One mm. If code is collapsed, but code pulsations present, management is same as here. Madam, if code is collapsed, but code pulsation present, Code pulsations, then we have to go for urgent cesarean section. I said the management depends on whether the fetus is alive or not. If the code pulsations up to then in one and that means fetus is alive. We don't have to go for ultrasound scan to confirm viability. If code pulsation is there, that means fetus is alive. Then the answer will be arrange an urgent cesarean section and deliver the baby. So, as I said, the breach is very high. We may not be able to do the breach extraction. So, in that case, we have to go for urgent cesarean section and deliver the pain. The answer will be that if cold pulsations are present, so deliver the fetus as uh, soon as possible under general anesthesia by doing a urgent cesarean section. Okay. Right. So perform urgent bedside ultrasound scan to confirm the viability. So next one, 28 year old crime gravida with spontaneous onset of labor at 40 weeks of period of gestation. Progress well in the first stage of labor. One hour after full dilatation of the cervix. Fetal head is one fifth abdominally palpable. Fetal heart rate is 120 beats per minute. Uh, sorry, so you got the answer. So 120 beats per minute, caput and mold in one plus with light meconium stain lipo. What is the management of this patient? I think you have seen the answer. What is the management? If code pulse present, can we also go for breach extraction? Code pulsation, yes, we can go for breach extraction, but breach should be at least engaged. The breach is minus 2 QM, it's not engaged breach, it's very high. If breach is engaged, if code pulsation is present, yes. Code pulsation, the sooner. We have to deliver. So either by extraction or either by cesarean section. But to do the extraction, so breach should be engaged. When breach is in the high up, minus 2, we can't go for breach extraction. So we have to go for cesarean section. But if it is breach engaged, yes, then the answer will be, suppose now the, in that question, if it says, uh, uh, yes, if it says uh, membranes are absent, cord felt in the vagina, cord pulsations are present, which is at the level of skill spine, you can make zero station. Then the answer will be perform. Sorry, not per this is not sorry. Then it will be perform the sorry. Perform breach extraction. So now, code pul pul pulsation is present. If breach is at the level of skill spine, then most appropriate next step will be perform breach extraction. Okay. Anything else? I think we will discuss the other, uh, other questions. Next time. Okay? Well then, why are you asking about the idea? Well then, in preterm labor, what is most beneficial to baby? Dexamethasone, no? Magnesium salt. 
why do you give dexamethasone? Why do you give magnesium? What are the indications for dexamethasone? And so, what is the indication for dexamethasone? And what is the indication for magnesium? Are you giving both for the same purpose or for different purposes? So you are asking in preterm labor what is most beneficial to the baby, dexamethasone or magnesium salt? Why do you give dexamethasone? Why do you give de uh, magnesium salt? Why? Any answer? So depending on that only you get your answer. What is more beneficial to the baby? Why do you give dexamethasone? For what? For what? Anybody? Why do you give dexamethasone? For the lung maturity. Lung maturity. <laughs> then why do you give magnesium sulfate? Prevent eclampsia. No, that is pre-eclampsia. Here somebody is asking for preterm baby. That is not for pre-eclampsia. We are nothing, we are talking, we are not talking about pre-eclampsia. But the uh, neurodevelopment, neuroprotection. Neuro right? Yeah. So do have different, um, uh, different uh, benefits. So both are beneficial. You can't say more beneficial. This is more beneficial. This is less than beneficial. No, both are beneficial. So you are giving the examethasone for lung maturity. But you are giving uh, magnesium sulfate for neuroprotection. So you have to give both. It doesn't mean this is better than the other one. So both are beneficial. You can't say no, the DEXA is more beneficial than magnesium sulfate. You can't say magnesium sulfate is more beneficial than DEXA. Both are beneficial. So we are giving two for Two, uh, two benefits, right? Different benefits. So you have to give both, right? Okay. Well, the in question for the answer is we will win one hour. Yes. We will win one hour. If you want. Here, 24 year old primary gravida with spontaneous onset of labor. Right, spontaneous onset of labor at 40 weeks of gestation, progress well in the first stage of labor, one hour after full dilatation of service, fetal head is one fifth abdominally palpable. Fetal heart rate is 120, caput 1 plus one mold in one plus, plus with light meconium stain like what is the management option? Next. Right, here so everything is normal, right. And I mean labor after full dilatation if the posterior fontanelle is felt in 5 o'clock position and after 1 hour is felt 3 o'clock position and there is capula what would be the next step of management. Okay. So I will tell you now the fully dilat after fully dilatation so normal second stage of labor for a primary gravida, what is the normal second stage? We can wait for two hours after fully dilatation, right? In a multi para, one hour after fully dilatation. So we, so normal uh, duration for second stage of labor after fully dilatation until delivery of the fetus. So for the primary gravida, it is two hours. For a multi gravida, it is one hour, right? But if the patient is with epidural analgesia, so as you know, second stage prolongs. So in that case, for a multipara, we can wait for three hours. For a sorry, for a primipara, we wait for three hours. For a multipara, we can wait for two hours. Right? So in this patient, one hour after fully dilatation. Head is one fifth palpable abdominally. Again, head is engaged at the end. Fetal heart rate is normal. One plus of caput, one plus of molding is normal. Light meconium stain lyco is also normal if the fetal heart rate is normal. Right? Then in that case, we don't wait. We can wait one more hour and review. Monitor and review in one hour. So that is the answer. Right? So, so as I said, 
primary, second stage, two hours without epidural, uh, three hours with epidural is normal, and for a multipara, one hour without epidural, two hours with epidural. Right? That is normal second stage, duration of the second stage. So we don't have to do anything here, monitor I will preview the one hour. Okay, so somebody has asked a question, so for that also we don't have to do anything. One hour is well three o'clock position and there is capus succedaneum. What could be the next step of management? Again, you wait for one more hour, right? Madam, the meconium stain, life is not a concern, is it? Meconium stain is even, here it says light meconium. Even with thick meconia, if the fetal heart rate and CTG is normal, uh, so we can uh, wait, right? Meconium is normal, if the CTG is normal, we don't consider it as significant. Now, with meconia, if the fetal heart rate is dropping, suppose if it has given fetal heart rate is 100 beats per minute, with light meconium stain, light. Okay, then we would take the answer as an instrumental delivery. Here again, if we can't, for an instrumental delivery, then the head should be fully engaged, 0 5th palpable abdominal window. It should be fully engaged to go for an instrumental delivery. 0 5th abdominally palpable should be, should not, it should not be palpable abdominally to do an instrumental delivery. Make a meconium, significant meconium, you know, and if fetal heart rate is dropping, then the answer will be emergency cesarean section. But even with light meconium, if fetal heart rate is normal, we can do it. Madam, starting oxytocin, why do you want to start oxytocin? Because she has progress well, make a in progress well in the first stage of labor. Then if she is contracting, if she is progressing well, we don't have to start on oxytocin. Because you can hyperstimulate the uterus. Answer D can't we take as answer. Answer D can't be very okay. That's why it's given now she has progress well in the first stage of labor. One hour after fully dilatation, if everything is normal, you don't have to start on oxytocin. Okay? Madam, please, this question number two for a while. Madam, if you force malpara, we do C-section. Oh, C-section or instrumental. Right. Now, even though we consider now this uh, this uh, normal duration, one hour or two hours, right? if she is progressing well, if everything else is normal, we can wait for another few more minutes or anything. Yes, we may have to go for the cesarean section. What is the abnormal molding, molding level? Abnormal molding can uh, one plus can molding one plus molding can if the, you know that in the fetal skull bone there is a gap. If that gas gap disappears, so if the bones are touching each other, that is one plus of molding. But if it is overlapping each other, but with pressure, if it separate, that is 2 plus. But 3 plus means the bones are overlapping each other, even with pressure, we can't separate. Right? So, if we, so that is abnormal. 1 plus, 2 plus is normally normal labor, but if it is 3 plus, if bones are overlapping each other, even with pressure, if, if it doesn't separate, then that is abnormal. That is abnormal molding. Caput same. 1 plus 2 plus of caput and molding is normal. But 3 plus of caput and 3 plus of molding is abnormal. Right? Okay. So someone is asking, can we go for instrumental delivery? Instrumental delivery, I told you, head should be fully engaged. Abdominally, head should not be palpable to go for an instrumental delivery. Okay. So we will discuss little bit more questions next time. So not next week, week after the next. 
so I will discuss more questions. Okay. Somebody is asking, can we discuss a little bit more? We will discuss next time. Uh, somebody wants to see the second question again. Can you see? Is it okay now? Transfer to touch the KI unit with following details. Which of the following you know, least importance in deciding time of delivery? First one. First one. First question. Okay. Could we get the recording please? I think so. So I will ask Ms. Oni to uh, put the recording. Okay. Thank you. So we will discuss a little bit more next time. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.